and welcome back to Baking with a Purpose. I'm Jamie and today we are going to be making a red velvet cake with cream cheese frosting which I'm really excited about and we're going to be talking about men and their role in reproductive health. So um, this is a really important issue. I interviewed um, a few men just to talk to them about their opinions, their stance, and their opinions on what we can do better as a society and what men can do better to support women. And this is also something that came up in a lot of my uh, interviews that I did with women. And I think this is just something really important because although the conversation about reproductive health is mostly focused on women and their needs, one of the biggest things that men can do is to support women. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about that and shed some light on that and hopefully make a little bit of progress in that arena. So again, like everything else with reproductive health, this is an extremely important issue. And so I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on what we're gonna be talking about before we launch into the cake and the interviews. So, men make up 76% of Congress. They have been 100% of the presidencies and right now they make up about 66% of the Supreme Court as well as large numbers of state government and so on that level they just have a huge impact on reproductive health because a lot of what we can do as women is limited to what we are allowed to do from the government and what kind of support we're getting from our leaders. So this is extremely important the role that men have in government is completely disproportionate to the amount of men in the world and so a lot of the decisions that get made are not exactly what would be helpful to women's health. Um, it's pretty obvious to say that men are responsible for their own reproductive health but it so often falls on women even though um, the Guttmacher Institute says that they've done some studies on women who have had an abortion and the results of women who had their male partner support were overwhelmingly positive and they actually couldn't find any negatives for having the male partner's involvement and support. And in addition, a study done by the Cleveland Clinic says that only three in five men get an annual physical and about 40% only go to the doctor when they think that there's something seriously wrong. Obviously, men aren't just, they're not having the same kind of medical conversations that women have. And this is something that comes up in the interviews um, that I conducted with men is that there's no catalyst per se, for reproductive health for men like there is for women. And like when women begin the menstrual cycle, that's when it comes time for them to start caring about their reproductive health. But men just don't have that kind of um, marker. And being more reluctant to go to the doctor, they're just not having the same kind of conversations about what they can do to care for themselves and their partners. In addition to that, um, from a Gallup poll conducted a few years ago, or actually since 2019, 46% of men identify as pro-life and 25% of men believe abortion should be legal under any circumstances. So this is obviously low. Less than half, a little bit less than half identify themselves as pro-life and only a quarter think that abortion should be legal on any circumstances. Um, this isn't great statistics for women's health, but um it's it's promising and there is some good news so from the same study it shows that men who think abortion should be legal in certain circumstances is up to 56 percent in 2019 from 48 percent in 2016. so it didn't specify what these circumstances should be and i think it would depend on the person but the fact seems to be that the amount of men supporting abortion, at least in some cases, is going up. Um, and another study says that 70% of men think men should take more responsibility for contraception. And this is really great news considering the burden is usually on women taking the pill or getting an IUD or a patch or an implant or some kind of thing 
usually it falls on the women and I have a lot of anecdotal evidence that says the same thing but the amount of men that think they should take responsibility is growing and that was clear in my interviews as well but there's still a lot of work to be done in terms of giving women this equal say in government in terms of reproductive health and as well as educating men on the impact of reproductive health and the burden that women are shouldering which is a lot and although they are aware some are aware there's still a lot left of to do for the education so to raise awareness for this this is which is the first step I'm going to be frosting a message on red velvet cake with cream cheese frosting, which I'm really excited about. And so if you want to see the final product and you want to hear some guys talk about their responsibilities and rights and opinions as men on reproductive health, then just stick around and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to be linking the recipes that I use in the description box so you can follow along with me. And then for the cake recipe and the frosting recipe, we're going to double it because the recipe only makes one pan worth of cake. So we're going to, I will show the doubled amounts, but in the, um, in the recipe link, it's going to do single. So if you just want to make one layer cake, follow the recipe exactly. If you want to make two layers like I am, then follow along with me. Okay, so we got our hands washed. Got our apron on and we're ready to start. So here's what you're gonna need. One cup of flour, two tablespoons of cornstarch, and two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Half a teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of salt. One cup of sugar. Half a cup of vegetable or canola oil. Um, you can use either, but I like to use vegetable. Two eggs. Uh, you're going to want them to be room temperature before you get started, so just leave them out on the counter while you're collecting all the rest of your ingredients. Four teaspoons of red food coloring. Um, I didn't measure it out because I like to do it to taste because if you add too much, it can change the consistency of the bake. So I just like to add it in a little bit at a time. Um, also, I like to use uh, liquid food coloring for the actual bake because I think the color looks more vibrant, but you can use gel if that's what you've got. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I used a little extra because as you saw in episode two, um, I like a little extra vanilla in my chocolate based cakes just because I think it tastes a little bit better, but the recipe only says one teaspoon of distilled white vinegar this one's kind of interesting but it helps offset the chocolatey taste of the cake a little bit and finally half a cup of buttermilk um i have buttermilk but i will link in the description um, an article that tells you how to make your own using whole milk and either vinegar or lemon juice and um, i'll link that below um trials and tests and whatnot um, are all do generally done on, on cis men. And so um, it's kind of just assumed that it all applies, but it doesn't always. And so it's important for specialty care. I wouldn't imagine there's much of a turning point for cis men, um, especially because like, even if they are sexually active, it's kind of like the responsibility is mostly put on the in in straight couples anyway like the cis woman right to like take care of everything and you know make sure she doesn't get pregnant <laughs> just that it's everybody's problem um not well problems the wrong word like it's every i think it's should fall on everybody's shoulders not just cis women I think just the reality is right now, a lot of men have a larger voice. It's like in politics or whatnot. So if they're supportive, then it can kind of give women a bigger voice to just have support for themselves. Exactly. You know, our society is just like basically rooted in misogynistic tendencies. Yeah. And seeking abortion is no easy choice for a woman. And men should want to respect that. And I mean, right now, Roe v. Wade is always under constant threat. and all these politicians and state governors who look to restrict women's right to self-determination is, is pretty ridiculous. 
and men just need to be an advocate for women. I think a lot of men don't want to lose the power that they have. Um, Cause even granting women like an equal opportunity for them, it just means that those men have less power to themselves. So it's, it's kind of like a power struggle for them and they just can't, they don't want to give it up. Yeah. I kind of thought the same thing. Just like men still kind of hold that idea that women should be subservient to them. Like plus on the emotional side, like men don't have to carry around that child. Like women do. Yeah. And again, it's no easy decision just to get a abortion, but men seem to think it is so a lot of men don't want to um, don't want to contribute towards that or they don't want to get involved with their own health and they say it's a women's problem really it's um it's everybody's problem yeah i kind of thought the same thing just men are always like oh i'm not going to get her pregnant or like i don't need a condom like i'll be fine yeah. I mean, it's easy to say, like, listen to the women that in your lives and, like, be more empathetic. But, like, what do you think men can, like, actually do to be more supportive of women? I think just decreasing the stigma and um, stop being so sensitive towards it. You know, if men are open and honest about the problems, they can help generate towards solutions and towards pushing towards women being more equal in healthcare just having the universal health care, like Wesley said, to just apply to everybody. Yeah, and like I said, just like fighting for women, going to their marches, like just showing up. I think the hardest thing to do for a lot of people is just doing research on the topic because yeah. if you do research, you show that it shows that anti-abortion laws, they don't work. Like people are going to find a way to get them anyways. So if you do research, you're going to come to a pretty decent conclusion right okay I would say just support them women already have a hard enough time you know getting a voice out and being heard when men are in such high power positions and so if, if you're not supporting them or being aware of their problems and helping them it just makes their message that much harder to come across so just like one more voice for them helps yeah, mine's, I guess, just pretty simple. It's just her body, her choice. You guys shouldn't be involved in it. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, especially because some men can have babies. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> it's like, it is important for everybody to have access to it. And it's it's also, like, really important to, like, normalize that kind of shit. I think they can be communicative, number one. Um, there's so many myths flying around out there about, you know, not, not even myths, but like that, that sexual reproductive health should be a woman's responsibility. And it should, but it, it is also a man's responsibility. Like nobody gets, no woman ever gets knocked up by herself. It's a two-part thing. Um, and uh, luckily in my experience as a sexually active adult, uh, I've had a lot of wonderful experiences with men, you know, making sure you know that I was on birth control or bringing condoms when we dated or slept together um but yeah I think the number thing number one thing that men can do is, is be communicative and be honest you know always have you know condoms on you communicate with your partners uh first time partner second time whatever how long you know you, you're together and make sure that you guys are on the same page and being healthy and responsible together of health changed since like when it comes time to like explain to him definitely yeah we have had a much much more open dialogue about sex and reproductive health than I ever had with my <laughs> parents growing up um he's always had you know access to condoms if he if he needs those he is a sexually active teenager and I'm glad that he trusted me enough to tell me that he was um, yep. And that way, you know, if he has weird questions, I can be there to answer those for him and just make sure that he is well supplied with what he can do as a man to take care of reproductive health in a relationship. So once we have cooled the cakes, 
Um, I'm gonna do my frosting. A message we're gonna pipe is her body, her choice, her voice. This was stated super clearly in the interview with Josh and Wesley. Um, this is something that is really important for people to know just in general, but it's great to have men saying that it's a woman's choice to do what she wants to do with her body. And another thing I wanted to add in there is because both um, Josh and Wesley and William talked about how it's really important to hand the mic to women. And because there is such a disproportionate share of women in the government and in just leadership positions in general, it's really important for men to be able to listen to women learn to that learn from them and spread the message that women are needing other people to hear um so i thought that would be a great way to kind of wrap up the interviews that we uh, all just heard and it's a great way to kind of package the idea of in a nutshell what women need from men so we're going to start with the frosting i've doubled this recipe as well because it only covers like basically the top and middle of a two layer six inch cake. So I've doubled the recipe and here's what you're gonna need. Half a cup of unsalted butter and you're gonna wanna soften that in the microwave for about 45 seconds. Eight ounces of cream cheese. You're gonna wanna use full fat and um, you're also gonna wanna soften that in the microwave for about 40 seconds. One cup of powdered sugar. Um, if it looks like the mixture is a little bit more liquidy than you'd like, you can add up to another half cup of powdered sugar. Half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I also use a little extra. And a pinch of salt to taste. Um, I don't like a huge amount because I think the cream cheese is a little salty, but um, it's up to you. How can a man support a woman with that? Go to the appointments with your daughter, your wife, your girlfriend, take her to the appointments, be present and hear that information. Um, I think that, that kind of like, yeah, it would be a good one. Yeah. Um, how would you rank the support that men in general give women in your experience, especially in terms of like reproductive health? You know, I, it's, I think my answer came, I was thinking about this and my answer is a three. Okay. Why do you say that? Um, I think, especially because I think there's men who, um, ha there's this group of men who treat women completely as inferiors. Um, and then also there's, uh, men who I think would probably like to say that they are, uh, uh, supportive in a, um, in a seven or an eight, but I think a lot of those men that would maybe say that they're a seven or eight don't actually follow through with a lot of the things that they like to, like to talk about. I think one of the things is like when, and I don't know the exact numbers, but when our lawmakers are generally 75% men, right. of course they're going to think that they have some right to make the decisions for women. Right. Um, I'd love to know how many lawmakers sit down with groups of women um, from varying communities and backgrounds and ask them for their views on reproductive health before they go to vote. Right. I'm gonna guess very few. Right, yeah. Well, for one, I think hearing from a trained medical professional is important. To having open communication with a trained medical professional. Right. And for the most part, women are the only ones talking with their doctors about stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's while receiving um, a prescription for birth control, going to the gynecologist, um, receiving care while they're pregnant, or while getting an abortion, how can we expect men to fully be as educated as women when they're not regularly seeing a doctor to address reproductive health, you know. Right. Um, sorry to be lewd, but there's not a penis doctor, you know, men go to, you know, yeah. they're not they're not addressing these these issues regularly and not addressing them with a medical professional. So I feel like uh, so many men are naive about this subject. They, they don't, there's so much that they don't know. 
I mean, why this is not on my list, but like, why do you think, why do you think they don't talk to the doctor about it? Oh, one, they're afraid. Well, because also, you know, I think for me, I grew up with two older sisters. Uh And I kind of know, you know, when a girl gets her period for the first time, there begins this conversation about, about things. And for men, we don't really have that, that kind of cut and dry point as when we need to talk about this stuff. And for so many young men, they just completely never talk about it. And the only talk is locker room talk about it, you know? And so it ends up being this really unhealthy conversation. And this is the question that I was the most excited to answer with you because it kind of goes back to the the joke that I started in the beginning that I was like, <laughs> I'm a white cisgendered male. I'm the authority on this subject. Right. You can talk to me, you know? Because I think the way to advocate for women is to shut our mouths and hand the mic over to women, you know, figuratively, but mm-hmm. also sometimes literally, um, and to spread the message, you know, uh, that, that they have. Um, you know, I was thinking about this and I'm not like, <laughs> I'm definitely not overly optimistic about the conversations about reproductive health that a room full of men in America would have yeah um and what i would hear if i sat in on that um but i think a room full of men being educated by a woman um both uh professionals and personal testimonies um i think that could really change things and i think that then men need to put the work into it um i feel like i'm a little bit of a hypocrite hypocrite by not I don't, I don't feel like I personally put enough work into, into addressing this subject in my community and in my life. Um, I feel like I could fall into that category I was talking about earlier of men who like to advocate for these things and talk about it, but not actually follow up and not actually be active in their community and doing these things. Um, so I, I could, I could use a taste of my own medicine. Well, I think it's good. And one of the reasons I mean, at first when I was doing this project, I was thinking like, I only want to have women involved because that's, or like women or people that need this kind of care because that's what it involves. But then your comment, I was like, well, sometimes is as much of a bummer as it is. Like sometimes men have to hear from other men that like, it's okay to be supportive in that way. Yeah, I feel like it's educate yourselves. Um, if you want to vote, um, at what point in a pregnancy an abortion can be performed? Um, I've thought about that, uh, to myself a few times. And when I think about that, I don't have an answer for that. Um, and I, you know, what's funny though, when I think about that, the first thing, and I've never, I, I need to do this, but I think I should ask my mom and my sisters, what do they think? You know? Um, and also, you know, and even then when you're voting on things like that, do you know what's going on at the different stages in a pregnancy? Right. Do you even know how pro- abortion is performed? Um, do you know how birth control works and what effects it has on someone, you know? Yeah. Um, and how the female body works. Um, and also not just education, but education directly from women. Um, I think there's so much to, um, reproductive health and that is like that men get involved with their views on on reproductive rights just because like well that would be my child because you know it's my sperm and i would have to be uh, pay child support for that child you know and that's (sighs) Um, you know, you have some part in it, but it's not your body, you know? And there we have it, the final product. It's a little hard to pipe with cream cheese frosting, I'm finding, but other than that, there you go. Um, We got our finished Her Body, Her Choice, Her Voice cake. And um, thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned something because I definitely did. 
And in the next episode, we're going to be talking about education and the impact it has on reproductive health. And we're going to be making a chocolate cake with Oreo frosting, which I'm super excited about because I've never made this before. Um, so be sure to check the other episodes if you want to learn more. And um, check out the links that I've put in the description. Like I said, I put the recipes in and put some tips for baking, especially a red velvet cake because they can be a little bit tricky. Um, and I've also linked all the sources that I used in my video and just um, general resources that have to do with reproductive health. Um, so check that out. And if you have a comment or a question or you just want to chat, feel free to leave a comment. And um, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.